In this lecture, I'll guide you through creating your very first shader in Unity. First, open a new 3D project and bring in the Z Bunny package given to you as a resource. Just drag and drop it into the asset folder. Then drag and drop the blue bunny prefab into the scene. You might recognize this little guy as the zombie bunny from the Zombie Toys Unity tutorial available in the asset store. I've decided to use him as a shout out to the Stanford bunny. For those of you who don't know, the Stanford bunny was created at Stanford University in 1994 for testing all sorts of computer graphics algorithms and he appears in many textbooks on the topic. Now our Zomb Bunny's looking a little blue because he is. If you have a look at the model by selecting it in the hierarchy, you'll find that there's a shader attached. It's called Hello Shader. You'll also see it down in the asset. So it's this big blue ball, which is your material on the bunny. Drop down that material and open it up and you'll see that the shader is set to standard. And that's a standard Unity shader, one that's coming with Unity. And we're going to replace this shader with our own code. To create a shader, in the project view, go create and then look for shader. It's not very far from the top. And you'll see there's a number of different types of shaders that you can create. Essentially, you'll get a shader piece of code with a skeleton structure in it. Now we're going to replace pretty much the entire skeleton structure, so it doesn't matter which one we use, but we are building at this moment a surface shader. So let's just pick the first one. That will give us a shader and we want to give it a name. The name you give it here doesn't necessarily relate to the name you give it in the code. And it's the name in the code that is the more important part. Let's put in here uh, my first shader. Let's call it that. Double click on it to open it with a text editor and you'll find that its name is my first shader dot shader. You don't have to type the dot shader in into Unity, it just automatically puts that on the end. But if you're looking for any shader files, they'll all have dot shader on the end. Now the code in here is quite complex and can be confusing if you've never seen shader code before. We're not going to start with this much code, though we will build up to more complex shaders that look like this. So select this entire lot of skeleton code that you ended up with and we will delete that and replace it with this. Shaders in Unity are written in a language called ShaderLab. It structures the code into logical segments to allow you to declare properties, write shader processing code and specify fallback functions for when the graphics card might not be able to handle the code that you've written. The very first line of code that you wrote gives the shader a name and tells Unity where to put it. In this case, the shader is called Hello Shader and will be in a shader set called Holistic. The Holistic is a little like a folder where you'll find your shader in the Material Inspector. The Properties block is where you can declare input fields to use as the variables in your shader processing. These will have their own editor formatting to determine how they will show up in the inspector. In this case, we've only added a property called My Color. It is of type color and shows up in the material inspector as a color picker. Next, there's a subshader block. This is where the magic takes place and you mix the inputted properties with model geometry information, surface coloring and lights to produce the final effect. We program inside here with a language called CG, otherwise known as HLSL or High Level Shader Language. It begins with a CG program block. These mark the start and end tags for your code. The first line beginning with Pragma is the compiler directive telling Unity how you want the code to be used. It contains numerous information, which in this case includes the keyword surface, indicating that you are building a surface shader, the name of the function containing the surface shader, in this case, surf, followed by the type of lighting you want to use. Next, a struct is given that declares the input data that will be required by your function. This can include vertex, normal, UV, and other information about the model's mesh. Then to access any properties you've created, you need to list them and the type of data they contain. You must refer to the property by the name and spell it precisely. Fixed for before the property in this case is a special shader data type that we will look at in detail later. For now, understand it as an array of four float values. 
After this, the surface shader function is given. It takes in the input structure you declared as well as a structure specifying the type of output data to be expected as well as changed inside the function. The output structure changes depending on the lighting model used. In this case, the lighting is Lambert and therefore the output is the surface output struct. You can see here the fields contained within it. Any of these can be modified inside the shader function. Here we are setting the albedo color to the color of the my color property box. We will take a closer look at lighting and the output structures in a later lecture. Last, but definitely not least, a shader is given a fallback. This is a basic, less GPU heavy effect to use on the surface of your model should the machine the shader is running on be incapable of running your code. With your shader code saved, switch back to Unity and then with your Zombunny, over in the inspector you want to set the new shader. Now remember the name of the shader that we gave it in the code. It's going to be under a subsection of shaders for holistic or whatever you gave it. In the material, which is on the bunny, under shader, we've currently got standard. If you select that, you'll find that there's now a category called holistic. And under that category will be your shader or hello shader. It's slightly off my screen. Let me just bring that in so that you can see it and holistic and hello shader. So if we set that now, the bunny is going to go white and you'll see that your example color value is now there. So this is the property that we declared at the top and we called it example color. And from here, you can change it to let's say red and you'll see that it affects the bunny because what it's doing is it's setting the albedo color, which is essentially the base color, the diffuse color of the bunny itself. And so that's made it the nice red. And then you can set it to whatever color you like and you can see that it will change. These other values here that come up inside the material, we'll look at those further down the track when we, they become relevant to us. But for now, this is the example color. Now, we can also go back into the code open up shader. Now, if you didn't want to change the albedo, which is your base coloring of your model, we could change this to something else that the surface output struct has, and it has what's called emission. So we can set the emission of the bunny to be the color that we put into that color property box. So save that and let's switch back here. Now you can see, because we already had that shader on the bunny, that it's updated immediately. We've lost all sense of the actual um, depth of that bunny because we're looking at an emissive color. So this is the color that is coming out, sort of like a light, I guess, from the model. And as you change it, you'll see you just get that flat looking model across there. So how do you think we might add an emission and also an albedo into our code. Have a think about it and pause the video if you'd like to have a go by yourself. But what we'll do is we go into my shader, up to the properties and we'll add another property. It'll be a color as well and we'll call it my emission like that. And we'll set it to example emission for the text that will be in the inspector. So this is the text between the quotes that shows up the inspector. This is the name of your property and this is the type it is. This is its initial value and we'll look at those in more detail when we look at properties in more detail. For now we're going to set my color to the albedo and my emission to the emission. So let's just copy this line as well and let's put albedo back up here like that and emission is going to be my emission. Now I'm going to save this. I haven't finished but I want to show you what happens when you get an error. So let's save that and when we go back into Unity and even before you can see that you've got a shader error happening down here. So let's go back to Unity. Over in the inspector when you've selected your particular shader it's going to show you you've got an error. So if you create a shader code, then it will come up with an error over here. It's a little bit more difficult to find than normal errors that you get in Unity, but 
you can be well advised that if you don't get the effect that you're after, or in fact, if your texture goes pink, which you might have experienced in the past, it will have an error in it. Okay, so in this case, um, it's got this error called um, my emission undefined variable. And that means that you haven't defined my emission. But you might think that you have because you've put it up the top and you've put it into the surface shaders uh, function down here. But remember, in order for these properties up here to be seen down in here, we need to declare them all inside of here. So the other place we need to put my emission is with my color, which is just here. So let me copy that and put this in, call it emission. Now it is also a color and colors, if you follow the same formatting, are this fixed for type. Another thing that we'll be looking at shortly. Right, so now we've got our mission and we've got our beta set up. Let's save that. And that will hopefully make our error go away, which it has down here. And switch back. Now if you select Zombunny, you'll see that you've got a example color and an example emission. And we can change the color like this. And we can change the emission to be a different color as well. And you'll see how those two colors interact with each other. So an emission color is the color that is being emitted as though the object is glowing and the albedo color is the base color. And that's all there is to creating a very simple shader. So we'll move on from here to actually have a look at what these properties involve and the different types of properties that you can declare and have show up in the inspector so that you can influence your shader code. And the other important thing we'll get around to too is what these fixed fours are and what the other types that come with these fixed fours. Look, there's a float too just up there as well. Uh, so all of these things will be revealed shortly in future lectures.